All right. So this is uh, office hours for December 8th, 2023. We only got like one more of these because I'm canceling it for Christmas. And I know that, uh, so D, if I'm understanding correctly, you have a scenario where you are trying to configure some additional materials, fees, et cetera, for a consulting business. So the the business is using products for its resources and we have a resource who's perhaps a consultant or an architect and they have a price per hour. But then we also have a requirement that says we want to find a way to account for some other additional additional fees or additional hours just in case for specific things. Does that sound correct based on what you've described so far? Yes, additional additional fees for some ex, ex, any kind of extra deployment um, tools that were used, not accounting, but um, mm. the question is how how without having to be able to account for the hours, but we have hours plugged into our price book currently. How do we, do I set it up mm. in my price book? Let me back out and ask a, te a technical question really quickly. What tool are we talking about? Are we talking about just general sales cloud? Are we talking about standard quotes? Are we talking about CPQ quotes? Or general Salesforce. Just basic was, products, price book, price book entries and opportunity products, no quotes at all? No quotes at all. Okay. I'm going to share my screen and we'll talk through this because this is very similar to what I do. And I have some other stuff that I've done for my consulting business that might be useful. Can you see my screen? Wonderful. The most asked question of the last three years. <laughs> can you see my screen? Yes, I can. All right. I'm going to use my consulting business as the example again here. This is what we did last week. For those who have not seen last week's December 1st office hours, I go deep for 45 minutes on products, price books, and price book entries. If, especially if you're new to CPQ, if you're new to sales cloud and using opportunity products, I strongly encourage you to watch that. It's going to help understand this data model and the records that need to get created when we're dealing with this. So let's first get an understanding here of the use case in question. I'm going to use a little note here. Uh, that's not that's the wrong object. I'm going to use this guy. Okay. So what we have is a scenario where I have a consultant. And I have some extra fees. And I want to sell a consultant with X number of hours and some extra fees or some extra, an extra line of uh, uh, that will account for any other stuff that we're doing for them. Let's think about, uh, that's not what I, I don't want these shapes either. I'm going to actually use these. So I got principal architect, let's do this. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go here. All right. We'll call this additional fees. And this is gonna be from here to here. All right. Let's just say principal architect, 325 an hour, standard price book. And we have our additional fees. Let's just say these will be a thousand US dollars, whatever. The prices don't really matter. What matters first is how we're gonna think about these different things. It all comes back first and foremost, every single time, what are we selling? The consultant themselves is pretty straightforward. And yes, even though we are a services company, we are going to use the product object. Services companies love to push back on this because they want to feel special. Oh, we don't sell products. We sell services. We are not. We can't use Salesforce. It's not going to work. And while I admit that 
CPQ can be awkward for services firms or even sales cloud or products. So there are some elements that could be a little bit awkward. However, the fact of the matter is I sell a unit of labor. That's what I'm selling. One unit of this person's labor. This person is expensive. There you go. Now, the big question in my mind is this whole additional fees thing. And here I've shown it as if it's another product of some kind. But I also want to challenge that a little bit and say, is that really another product or is that just part of the resource model to calculate the total number of hours we need for the consultant? For example, let's take a basic project. In a basic project, we have discovery, design, develop, deploy basically, right? We ask a bunch of questions. We do some design based on the answers we get. We build some stuff and then we deploy what we built. Basic project. And people can argue with me about the, oh, that's too high level or whatever. Okay. Project managers, there's a YouTube channel for you. <laughs> but in our case, let's keep it simple. I might use some sort of formula to ballpark how much each one of those is going to be. Maybe I'm going to spend 10% of my budget on discovery. I'm going to spend 20% of my budget on design. I'm going to spend 50% uh, of my budget on development. And then I'm going to spend an, the remainder on, what am I at? I got 20% left. Yeah. I'm going to spend the last 20% deploying. Great. Great. For simplicity, let's just say I have 100 hours of budget to work with. Well, that means that 10 hours gets put into discovery and 20 hours gets put into design and you know so on and so on. But really all I need is a one principal architect, quantity 20, and I'm done. This is where services firms and it gets awkward, especially in like a CPQ context is that it's a function of how many hours a week and how long are you doing this and how are you staffing the project? There's a lot of variables involved in this, but at the end of the day, you look at any of these professional services firms, pricing spreadsheet or scoping documents, every consultancy on earth has some spreadsheet that they use to staff a project. That spreadsheet has the resources they want to use, the hours per week. They probably got some sort of timeline and they're estimating their hours or whatever. But there's generally some sort of ratio between these different phases of a project. So what do you really need in your system? What is the real need? I need to know how much this project is worth. That's the real thing we're getting at, right, D? What's the price of this project? Well, if you have a... If you have a framework that you're using to construct a project, let's build it out. So to build a project, I'm going to have discovery, design, development, and deployment. Or if we wanted to make them all verbs, we can do uh, discover, design, develop, deploy. Oh man, look at that. And it's alliteration. Oh, I love alliteration. So this is our project. Now we make some decisions and I say, okay, cool. Discovery, discover is going to be 10%. Design is going to be 20%. Develop, if I can spell, is going to be 50%. And then finally, deploy will be 20%. A lot of companies will have some sort of framework like this when they're scoping out their projects. It's Consulting is not an exact science, especially if you're doing time and materials. And that's what it sounds like we're doing. Time and materials. Your requirement sounds like I want to get money up front for the materials. We know you're going to have your consultant. Your consultant is going to be 100 hours. That's what this example will be for simplicity. 
So 10 hours here, 20 hours, 50 hours, 20 hours. Great. We know now what this line is going to be doing. So what's this line? Well, this might be travel. This might be uh, software we have to we purchase on behalf of the client. It could be any number of other things, but you're trying to account for that upfront. It could be as simple as one pro one product on the opportunity for the architect and one for the fees or materials, whatever you want to call it. Now, what does this include? That's a whole other that's a whole other thing. Like the fees or the the materials, is this a whole bunch of different stuff for one price? Almost like a fixed fee project where, okay, I'm going to, uh, a lot of consultancies like to do quick starts. So you pay me $5,000 and I will get you a basic sales cloud implementation. And this is what it's going to include. Boop, 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 boop. It's very specific. It's very discreet. And the scope is really tight because I'm doing this fixed fee. I can't have a bunch of scope creep, which happens on nearly every project under the sun. But we're keeping this really tight. It's going to be 5,000 bucks all in for this, right? That might be what this additional fees is for you. So the, the, big, the big questions here is like, what is this? What are you actually selling? What do you sell? We know you sell consulting hours, but how do we account for this? Maybe just keep it simple for the start. Maybe you just say, we're going to have a product that's it's a catch-all product. I'm not even call it additional fees. I'm going to call it other stuff. Whatever. I don't care what it is. And then I'm just going to make the price editable on the thing. The user can make the price whatever they want the price to be. And we'll just use that. Quantity, one. You could even... Included in the description. Other stuff includes um, licenses, 10 hours of consulting, and a refrigerator. Because I like ridiculous examples. Great. Put that in the description for ten thousand for a thousand dollars or for ten thousand dollars. You get the licenses, the consultant for 10 hours, and or an additional 10 hours of consulting and a refrigerator. What a lot of, what I see a lot is an effort to create a product for everything under the sun. It's kind of like when people budget, people will budget and they'll, I want to spend this much on this and this much on this. And they'll go through every single bill that they have. Oh, on cable, I want to spend this much a month on phone use. I'm going to spend this much a month. No, no, no. Just keep it simple. I'm going to spend 500 bucks a month on bills and utilities. There you go. As long as you stay in there, you're good. We often get too granular with things. It's, and it's a balance that we have to achieve. What is the minimum that you can do and build to achieve the desired outcome? The desired outcome is knowing how much this project is gonna cost the customer, right? What is the price to the customer for this project? That is a factor of the specific levels of consultants that you do. So maybe you got an architect, you have a consultant, you have an analyst, and then perhaps you have a development center and a resource over there. Okay, great. So there's four different resources at four different price points. So you'll have four products in the system and you'll have, uh, other stuff for $5,000, $10,000, $15,000, whatever. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that I can forecast my projects. I know what each of these opportunities for a project is going gonna, is gonna to be at the end of the day. I mean, let's even take the products off the table. When a lot of these consultancies start out, you know, if you're it's, independent person like me, or at least when this video is made, it's just me, Carbons Consulting. I am the company. I don't even need opportunity products on my thing. I could just have a scoping spreadsheet that I use 
in Google Sheets and I could figure out how many ballpark hours or whatever, and I could just plug the end result into the opportunity amount field. Because if I'm not using opportunity products, I can just enter whatever I want into the opportunity amount. I don't. I use this. I use the principal architect. I use my rate and I use one price book. It's an extremely simple data model. Why? Because it's just me. I don't have anybody else. Now, if I hire a, uh, let's say I hire an analyst. Cool. I hire an analyst. Now I'm going to have another product. And the analyst is not going to be 325. Maybe the analyst is, say, 225. And they're still going to be in the same price book. There we go. Done. Now I add a principal architect and an analyst to my opportunity. I put in how many hours each person is going to work on the project. That all rolls out to the opportunity amount. Salesforce does that for us and I'm done. Because again, you said you're not using standard quotes. You're not using CPQ quotes. We're just adding opportunity products on an opportunity. When in doubt, do less. When in doubt, build less. When in doubt, keep it simple. I could even go simpler than this. Let's just say for the sake of example, I have a product called consultant and I have a, fee, a rate that's in the price book, but then I just add multiple lines for consultant. Well, you have one consultant at 325 and I have one consultant at 100 and you're just manually adjusting all those different lines. You could do that. There's no right answer here. I think that's the important takeaway. There is no right answer. There's the best answer that fits your business and meets your requirements. But it starts from having that crystal clear idea of what the end result needs to be. What do I need to know? I need to know the price of a project. The price of a project for our business is a function of consulting hours and uh, materials. Time and materials. Yeah, go ahead, D. Really, uh... And that that that's the lock. Keeping it simple, man. That's 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 a teacher, your teacher, thinking right there. Yeah, simple is kind. How do I? How do I? Um. How, how uh, do we? How do I, I like to it? say that any idiot can make things complicated. That's why. <laughs> right, There's Charles this, Charles uh, Mingus, the jazz uh, the jazz pianist, band leader, bassist, genius. Uh, you know, he talked about how, like, keeping it simple that's genius, man. That's genius. That's teaching. That's a teacher. If you yeah. can take something complicated and make it simple, yeah. Anyways, oh, my, I was, I said, how do, how do I, how do I compensate? How do I compensate for that other stuff? Or whatever I want to call it is the number of hours, though. How, how is there a way to fix that? We just, Make it one hour. Just keep it simple. Maybe you because... have, um, maybe you add this line twice. Maybe you just have your, a very broad bucket. Like, um, I don't know, let's say you, this is another thing that sometimes happens with consultancies is you start to productize your services. All right, let's use my business as an example here. Because this, let's be real, this office hours is basically free advertising for me. Um, so I, um, the, every project that I do that is revenue cloud, well, really any project we're going to do needs a deployment, right? Okay. A revenue cloud project is going to follow very similar steps for every deployment. I need to install the package. I need to move my metadata from the sandbox into the production environment or the next sandbox, whatever your architecture looks like. I need to move my CPQ data, the products, the price books, price book entries, et cetera. I need to do a whole bunch of things. And it's the same shit on every project. With exceptions, of course. I mean, there's like 
the same types of things happen on every project. So why don't I bucket that up? I figure out what does a CPQ deployment take? How can I tell the client, okay, this is what your project's gonna look like. And then this is what the deployment's gonna cost. And it's just a $20,000 fee to deploy CPQ to production which is also really risky when you really know your shit because there's so many variables there. But just for the sake of example, let's pretend for a moment that every CPQ deployment was exactly the same, which is ridiculous to think about, but go with me. So let's pretend they're all the same. Well, if they're all the same or at least strikingly similar, then I can systematize and I can start to automate my services business. I could say, well, it's going to be this much. Or here's another example on the opposite side of deployment, I want to do an assessment. So let's say that a client comes to me and says, hey, we want you to, we already have CPQ. We want you to help us roll out a new line of products. Okay. Um, we want to understand what's going on in our org before that happens. Great. I might sell them a revenue cloud assessment. And I say it is $10,000. And for $10,000, I will assess your implementation of Revenue Cloud for these types of things. And I will give you these outputs, this documentation, I'll create some resources, whatever. And for $10,000, that's what you get. I'm not talking hours now, because in this particular case, I have thought deeply about what I deliver to my client. I know that it is strikingly consistent because if they have Salesforce Revenue Cloud, I know I'm gonna take a look at the quote, the quote lines. I'm gonna take a look at their products. I'm gonna take a look at their bundle configuration if they have any. I'm gonna look at price rules, product rules. I'm gonna go through the system and I'm gonna assess all this different stuff to see what they have implemented in their org. Well, I know what those steps are. It's basically a big checklist. I'm gonna do the checklist. The client's not paying for me to bill hours, the client is paying me for, to, for me to complete a checklist. So if I'm able to say it's $10,000 for the completion of this checklist, the client says, great. That'll be incredibly valuable to our business. Cool. Does it matter how many hours it takes me to do that? No, they need the outcome. They need to know what the hell is in their org. I can help them do that. Now, if I do all the work or if I have uh, some anal business analysts that assist with that, that's a resourcing issue for me to figure out who's going to actually do the assessment. Am I going to do the assessment? Is one of my employees going to do the assessment? And that becomes a business decision internally. But from the client perspective, it doesn't really matter. What they need to know is what's in here, what's in the box. I will help you. My business will help you figure out what's in the box. It's going to cost $10,000 to figure out what's in the box. So as you're looking at your business, you can start to think about everything in terms of what does the client get for this money? Here, this is the price. What's the value of the price? In the case of a consultant right here, principal architect, analyst, the price is 325 for what? For a principal architect for however many hours. For an analyst is 225. That's the price. What is the value? You get an analyst. That's the value of an analyst. 225 an hour times X number of hours. Or we go back to that previous example. Um, I've productized my services. I have a deployment package and it is $20,000 to deploy. Whether that takes my bit, my consultancy 100 hours or 10 hours or 1,000 hours, doesn't matter. What matters is that it's in production. That's what matters. What do I pay? $20,000. What do I get? A deployed solution. So that's how I would start to think about some of this stuff. What the actual product architecture should look like, that's up to you. There's no right answer here. You could go a bunch of different ways and they're all correct. 
you could just use one product for consultant and just do plug in a value, especially if you have blended rates, if everybody's basically the same rate anyway, or if you use a blended rate model and you're still a small consultancy or something like that. Sure. Uh, it's $200 an hour is to 25 an hour blended rate. And it's, we've calculated all the hours across all the resources. It's going to be about 200 hours. Cool. 200 hours at the rate. There you go. Done. Or maybe you break things out. So some of it's going to depend on how much or little you have productized your service offerings. Some of it will depend on how you want to bill an invoice for this later. Some of it may depend on how you want to recognize revenue. Some of it may depend on um, how you break out your projects and what your project methodology is. Some of it may depend on any number of other factors, which is one of the challenges of this whole thing is that there's no right answer. There are answers that are definitely wrong, but like a wrong answer would be principle creating a product record for every number of hours a consultant might possibly work. So I have a thousand product records where it's principal architect one, principal architect two, principal architect three. And then the price book entry is like 325 times one, 325 times two. That would be a wrong solution. That's a terrible architecture. Um, so there are really bad solutions, but there are, there's usually no, this is the only way to do it. Correct solution. This is by the book. This is the perfect way. It doesn't exist. So we have to learn to operate in this world of ambiguity where there is no right answer, where everything depends uh, and where you just have to find the best overall solution for you. And with that, it brings us to the bottom of the hour. I have a, a, another veteran mentorship here coming up in a couple of minutes, but good question, D. It gave me a chance to talk about a lot of different stuff. Hopefully it was helpful. Yes, it was. Okay. Um, Thanks, man. Keep me, keep me posted on, uh, on what you end up, uh, what you end up doing. Other than that, I will, uh, I'll see you later. Appreciate you, John. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.